Gear is survival. Gear is good, therefore gear equals survival. <laughs> survival is good, gear is good, and not dying is good, therefore you need gear not to die. <laughs> okay, damn it, all I'm trying to say here is you need gear for survival. If you don't have gear, you're not gonna be doing much surviving. Now, unless, of course, you're that 1% or 0.00001% of people out there with the primitive skills to walk out into mother nature and live in harmony with just a bush pot, a knife, and a canteen for the rest of their entire existence. That's not me, and I'm guessing that's probably not you. So not only is gear essential for survival, one could say that gear is the essence of life itself. So let's have a look at that gear, because that's why we're here. Call it an inch bag or call it a long range survival kit. Either way, this bag is designed to allow me to survive without resupply for a maximum of 30 days. And yes, that would suck. And yes, I would lose weight. And no, I'm not carrying 3000 calories of food to eat every single day. In previous videos, we had great discussions on inch bag strategies and packing tips. So be sure to check out the playlist down there in the description and the pinned post. Now here's a real quick warning. If you are triggered and you feel offended or attacked when you see toxic levels of badass gear, camouflage, talk about self-reliance and survival and things of that nature, then you're going to want to click out and run to your safe space right now. Do whatever you do. Hang out with your Funko Pop characters. Hug your mommy. Play some video games. And I promise everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Now, back to it. So the first issue that arises when packing a long range kit is weight. If you pack carelessly, your low back and your shoulders will definitely let you know. They'll be quite angry. So in order to cut weight, I found that segregating my gear into modules helps me stay better organized and in general helps me pack lighter. So I always like to use the five C's of survival to build the foundation and then layer accordingly. Okay, let's get rolling with the star of this loadout, the EXO Mountain Gear K2 3500. This bag has been my go-to bag for the past few years, and it is the perfect do-it-all pack, tipping the scales at a featherweight five pounds. Thanks to the titanium frame and lumbar support, it travels nice and easy, even when carrying heavy loads over long distances. The shoulder harness has a unique design that enables micro adjustments for that perfect fit. And then this bag is just covered in compression straps, which provide tons of options for securing gear to the outside of the bag, while you have seven main compartments that make organization fast and simple. Fully expanded, this bag easily supports my entire survival kit, including the sleep system, the cook set, the food, the flashlight, the weapons, the tools, the multi-tools, the clothes, the shelter. You name it. And then there's just tons of other features on this pack, including this awesome floating lid that make it my forever pack, no question. Now moving on to tools. Captain Obvious here, I gotta state that tools are not light, but absolutely essential for survival unless you're on that next level where you go and you just make your own tools. And that's cool, I'm not there. So I gotta carry some tools, but I keep weight in mind. And so I choose a set of core tools and then I add specialized items such as the linesman pliers or a pry bar. Now, obviously some items you see here may not be used due to conditions that require stealth. The ax being a perfect example. It's super effective, chops down anything in its path, but it's kind of loud. So if noise is a consideration, I'm going to not use the axe and I'll use the Silky Pocket Boy or the Baco Lapland or whatever folding saw I decided to take with me at the time. And then the other items you see here, we got the multi-tool, we got the Gerber LMF2 and a grappling hook because I like to pretend like I'm Batman in a survival situation and swing wildly through the trees. Yeah. Something like that. Anyways, <laughs> moving on to the food supply. Now, when it comes to food, I like to keep it simple and keep it basic. Lots of quality fats, carbs, and protein to help me retain as much muscle and weight as possible. Although I do understand that I'm going to lose weight in a survival situation because guess what? My maintenance calories are about 2,500 a day. And that's based on the fact that I work out five to six times a week and yeah, I can't carry 2,500 calories a day, 14 day supply of any duration 
in this bag unless all I want to do is carry food. So yeah, I'm going to lose weight, but the goal here is to just basically average between 1,000 to 1,500 calories a day, and that's depending on the level of exertion. Maybe on one day I'm just in camp, so I don't need to eat as much food. Maybe another day I need to jet off on a 20 mile hike and I will need some more food. So you get the general idea there. And then of course, depending on the time of year, foraging can be a great way to supplement the food supply, but you gotta be mindful of poisonous plants. Now, since we're talking about food, we might as well talk about the cook set. Of course, no survival kit can be complete, in my opinion, without a stainless steel canteen. Now, depending on the bag and the mission and, and other factors, I'll either go with the Pathfinder Canteen and Canteen Cup from Self-Reliance Outfitters, or in this case, I just ditched that and went with my stainless steel World War II issue canteen with a canteen cup and then the Uber Leave and flat pack stove. And this stove actually, check this out, this is pretty cool. This setup is dual fuel. So I can cook with wood or I can just cook with this propane canister here because there may be some times where I don't have the capability to start a fire or starting a fire is just not a good idea. So I have the best of both worlds available there. And then once again, depending on how much room I have, I might use my bush pot. Sometimes I just leave that behind and I just rely on the canteen and um, canteen cup and that's really all I need. But that being said, let's go ahead and move on. What is next? Oh, one thing to mention here real quick is I have a survival fishing kit in, in this container. It's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, but I've actually caught a few fish with it before. So yeah, why not have that with me as well? And now fashion, because you gotta look cool in a survival situation. If you're not looking cool, then why are you even there? But anyways, experience has taught me not to try to look too cool in a survival situation and dress like Rambo. So I ditched the camo uniform and now nowadays I go with a more civilian attire that blends in pretty well in urban or wilderness environments. And then in the bag, I do have a set of camo just in case, right? But no matter the season, I always try to pack, of course, extra socks, extra underwear, and I prefer to wear a rash guard, bottom and top that helps eliminate chafing. Moving on to mindset, because in a survival situation, you want to maintain a positive mindset. Pretty important. So I got my favorite survival book in here, the SAS Survival Guide that I got from my good friend across the pond. And this is like the 1993 cards right here which also doubles as a plant identification guide so I don't wind up dead from poison bear. Yeah, that's cool oh yeah and I got this um, camping knots reference cards there too which is pretty nice Moving on to navigation and mobility, which is pretty important in a survival situation because you may actually have to navigate through area and terrain that you've never been in before. So if you can navigate using a map and compass, boy, that is a game changer because you just can't always rely on GPS. You can't rely on your devices because they're gonna run out of battery. GPS may not be available due to cloudy weather or maybe the grid being down or satellites being shut out of the sky by Russians. So whatever the case is, I can still find my and navigate between two points that gives me the ability to stay mobile and stay on task yes here is an important category water the human body can only survive a few days without water me personally after about four or five hours of not drinking water I'm pretty damn thirsty so for me this is a non-negotiable survival need and I guess not for me, but for all humans, you gotta have water, right? So that's why I take this pretty damn seriously and I prefer multiple options to get the job done. My primary filter is a Sawyer Squeeze. However, I carry water purification, tablets for backup, and I also have a Silcock key here for water access in urban environments. And then finally, to top this off, I have a custom Milbank bag here that can serve as a pre-filter to get any sort of dirt and debris out of the water before I actually filter it, thereby keeping my filter nice and clean and unclogged. And speaking of staying alive and all that kind of good stuff, you gotta have a medical kit, right? And you have to have a medical kit that can handle both big and small emergencies because you could have a gunshot wound or you could just have a simple cut that gets infected and starts causing you some big issues, right? So taking this into account, I split my IFAC into two concerns, major and minor medical. On one side, I got the trauma kit. I got that going for all the bad stuff. Gunshot wounds, puncture wounds, cuts, heavy bleeders, all that good stuff. I got chest seals, I got quick clot agent, ace bandages, multiple tourniquets, and gauze. Those are the foundations of that kit. 
And then in the second compartment here, I gotta focus more on the small stuff with everything from moleskins for taking care of my feet, band-aids, stair strips, neosporin, and pretty much, what else do I have in there? Oh yeah, I even have the thermometer in here and a couple other little goodies, but that's a general idea. And I got this entire kit from Live the Creed Medical, which is a pretty freaking awesome company category that a lot of people either don't talk about or don't even cover and that is repairs because let's face it you can have the toughest gear on planet earth but it's going to wear out sooner or later because daily use in harsh environments takes a big toll and trust me i know and i've learned this the hard way so that's why i carry a repair kit now these items that you see here are intended, intended to address the most common equipment failures from broken zippers to cracked quick release buckles quack what quack Quacked? Are we talking about ducks here? No. Uh, cracked, quick release buckles, or torn fabric. And here's another important category, and that is shelter. Now, luckily for me, my area of operations is the southern United States. It's a mild climate here. Even during the winter, it only gets down to maybe 20 degrees, so I can go pretty lightweight. I go with the tarp, poncho liner, hammock, and a sleeping pad. And then for that winter season, like I said, it gets down in the 20s, pretty cold. I combine the poncho liner with a reflective emergency bivy, and then I throw on my base layers, a jacket, a beanie, some gloves, and I'm pretty much good to go. Next up is fire. This one is super damn important. However, the environment may not always permit fires due to security concerns, right? Because fire is light, fire is smell, and you may not want to attract that type of attention. However, I still wanna have that option available for cooking, boiling water, or warmth. And once again, you will see this as a theme through this entire survival kit. I like to keep it simple and keep it basic. I don't have any gimmicks. I just have the items that always work for me, the Swedish Fire Steel, the Bic Lighter, and then my Tender, which is Jute Twine and Cotton Balls. Next category is technology, and this is something I want to keep on point because unless an EMP takes that modern civilization and rewinds a clock 200 years, I want to keep my imported devices charged and capable. This includes my iPhone and the Baofeng radio. Now in the past, I've tried solar, solar chargers with basically no luck. They all suck, they don't charge, and then one like I had, I was super excited about, I spent $80 on it, and I had a perfect day. Blue sky, sun out all day, and it charged my phone from zero to 10% over the course of 16 hours. Yeah, so <laughs> I stopped doing that, and I just go with the basic battery pack that gets the job done, no questions asked. Then I toss in a few cables, a USB drive of important documents, and I'm basically done. And then all that gets rolled up and tossed in the Faraday bag for an extra layer of protection. Next up is signal and comms. And this is a critical aspect of my survival kit because I wanna have the ability to signal for help, to light up the darkness with a flashlight or possibly communicate with other survivors. At the last minute, I threw in this smoke grenade, which can be kind of nice because you can use that to mark a position or cover an escape. And something else I want to mention here real quick, guys, you see I have multiple options for lighting. I have the flashlight, I have the headlamp, which is RGB, which gives me the ability to have red, green, or blue light, which is really nice when you want to stay low profile and conserve your night vision. I also have the candle, which can provide a little bit of light, a little bit of warmth. Our last category is hygiene because staying clean is absolutely essential to prevent infections and also boost morale. Included in this kit are nail clippers, tweezers, deodorant, and a Sea to Summit microfiber towel. And then just in case there's another pandemic that pops up, I got a face mask in there to take care of it. Are you not entertained? Have you not seen enough gear? Maybe I should remove some gear. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could add more gear, sure. Or maybe I could just get rid of all this gear. This whole thing is silly. I should just get rid of all of it and just trust in Big Daddy Biden to take care of me. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon. What is going to continue to happen is I will continue to come out in the woods, train with my gear, refine my skills and my strategies, and be prepared for an uncertain future. And I hope that you do the same. From one fellow gear whore to another, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Ah... Uh.